Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Program. I'm with Chris Krieg, a muralist, artist, and entrepreneur, and uh, my longtime friend. So I have a, a shot of you on a billboard in New York City, on a Donna Karen uh, painting a, a DK New York ad in the 80s. And the thing was so huge. And you're up there, and it was, uh, you know, such a, 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 a magical thing. And so these ads were site-specific. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're one-offs, so they're original pieces. Mm -hmm. And you described it as a one-act play. So let's talk about the one-act play up there. Mm. Well, I mean, most advertising is viewed quickly, these large images. So I always thought, it as a one act, as, thought of it as a one-act play. People would catch it as a glance, less than a second sometimes, and so it had to be impactual, had to be good design, it had to, had to really draw them in at that moment. And that was the one on Houston Street, by the way. Very a big, that was big, probably 85 feet square. So yeah, that was a monster. So that's a big commission to get something like that. Those were all done through uh, uh, Foster and Kleiser. They, you know, they would have salesmen that would sell those ads. And you know these clothing designers at that time in New York City were anxious to get their image out there. It was the center of the universe for uh, fashion. Okay. So again, in in contemporary life now, you have uh, altitude murals. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big concern. You do big big scale buildings. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to New York City, mm -hmm. and we're we're. Uh, the two of us are met in this uh, really cauldron of art. We yes. were in we were in the we were in the pop days, mm -hmm. and the pop days to you and me, uh, it, as we're thinking of it now, we're talking about James Rosenquist. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about F one eleven and uh, F one eleven is uh, God. It's I think it's owned by the Deutsche Bank now, but it's like a hundred and fifty seven foot long mural that he painted on panels uh, in his Broom Street studio, which I went and visited him at a few times. And again, let, let's. I guess we need to uh, give some background to this. He was both a Bill, Bill yes. an artist before he became known and, as a and, fine and, and, artist. And this was amazing to me. He, he was in Local 230, uh, the same sign painting union I was in, and everyone was talking about him because they knew I was painting on the side. And I, I was just amazed that somebody actually transcended being a billboard painter to being a fine artist. And boy, when I scratched the surface, it was amazing to me uh, the volume of work he was doing. I. Uh, one of the other painters there used to work with him, Frank Raziopi. So Frank said, come on, kid, let's go down and meet Jimmy. <laughs> so we go down to Jim Rosenquist's studio on Broom Street. It was like, holy cow, this is amazing. It wasn't that big, but it was a long room, and he was painting everything on canvas, and he just had notes and pictures and little scraps of paper all over the floor. And it wasn't, he was like the first real artist I'd ever met. It was like... I, it wasn't what I expected. You know, it was like meeting another guy working in the billboard shop. And uh, we had a beer together and hung out. And I, I went back several times after that, but it was a, a wonderful chance meeting to know that somebody could sort of transcend the billboard craft into the fine art craft. And so the, the UI knew during these days, so this is, these are the Andy Warhol days. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we we, we, Andy, and, yeah. and Andy, Andy was around us, yes. and Pop was king, mm -hmm. and um, uh, well, by, by now it's kind of almost post-Pop, but mm -hmm. the, the you I knew, um, you know, I, I didn't really know your, the, the, the uh, Billboard background as much as you were, I, I always saw you as a fine artist, because you were, really? you were, you oh. were well, because I didn't know that part. I, I always but I always had a painting. But in the you were works. you were always yes. painting. Yeah. In, in fact, I, I had I found a painting of me <laughs> that, <laughs> that you had done at the mm -hmm. time. So th that's the you I remember. So you were always in the fine art world. I didn't wow. I didn't uh, associate you with things. We got together and we did a. We I was lucky enough to be involved with you in a show this last year in. Uh, Evergreen, Colorado, at the mm -hmm. uh, Center of Arts Evergreen, called mm -hmm. Word, mm -hmm. and what Word 
show was is where advertising meets fine art and right. what, what one world is, what the other world is, and what happens when they combine and what happens when you take uh, advertising into the gallery. Yes. And, and what's influenced by one and what's influenced by the other. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in, in, in now the, in, in our 2022 world, the uh, boundaries have kind of slipped away a little bit. So let, let's just talk a little bit about uh, the word show. Hmm. Well, it was kind of some. It was a show that uh, uh, we had talked about at the Center for Art, the Arts Evergreen with Lisa Nuremberg and Sarah Miller. Uh, they wanted a show that could be interactive because it was the height of COVID, but they wanted to fill the whole place. Yeah, this was really their big opening push. It was. It, uh, they wanted to fill the place with art, and they but they didn't want to have to deal with. Uh, you know, sort of like curating a show with 30 different artists. So they asked you. So they asked me, you know, and I did big work, big work so I uh, immediately enlisted uh, a whole cadre of my friends that are uh, in the big art world. And of course, Mark Bear was part of it because of his multi-screen projections that he does of, of these amazing uh, multimedia things. So we had a room for him. We actually built a billboard inside the big room there that just sort of stole the show. And you could walk right up to it and see all the paint on the swing stage and the brushes and the process, and it was all hand-painted. And So it's a Motel 6 sign. It was a Motel 6 sign. And when you took it into the art space, it, it dazzled as a piece of post-pop. Yes, it did. And it, did. it, it, it changed the... Um, it owned the room, for it, sure. It, it owned the room, and it changed the meaning of what it was. Mm -hmm. And suddenly... Commercial art became fine art, right? And it's an interesting alchemy. Well, yeah, and it's a, it's an idea that's been percolating in my brain for years. I always wanted to cut one of those Wyoming billboards down at the quick and just lift it up and move it into a huge gallery setting, and so we did it with this. Yes. Let's talk about David Russell a little bit. David Russell was in the show. He did a beautiful piece. He's a dear friend of mine. He was my helper back in the day. He was a a graffiti artist who started being uh, my assistant, quick as a whip, and he would help me paint all these giant billboards or wall signs, whatever I needed him to do, he was my helper. And one thing led to another, and he went off to uh, become a, a teacher at a high school locally, and then decided he wanted to get a, a degree in outdoor art. Yeah, he got his master's. He got his master's degree. He created his own degree at, at Otis Institute of Art. And uh, so he ended up That's getting a, Which a, is in Los Angeles. Yeah, it's in LA. He ended up be, uh, getting a master's degree in that. And he teaches there now. He, teach lar he teaches large scale art there, which has really been a nice transition. But his view of the art world and how, uh, how commercial meets fine art has just been fabulous to work with him on that. So we're looking at how to collaborate. Um, and we're uh, looking at walls in, in Sand City and how to take the, basically the, the word idea and the advertising idea. And again, you and I collaborating together, mm -hmm. looking at uh, the James Rosenquist, mm -hmm. which is these long panels. We're, we're, we're looking at a lot of Rauschenberg, we're looking at Rosenquist. Mm -hmm. And what, to, what happens when in collaboration? And that's uh, collaboration has been very much part of the We Festival uh, in uh, mm -hmm. Sand City. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so I've been working on images, and you've been trying to see what you know, how, you know, what works, and and your images, and what we can create together as a, um, you, you know, to take out of the gallery that we started in Word, and now to get it in a wall and to continue the word conversation to hopefully develop this show and this concept and this idea farther to take it onto another venue or to, uh, um, y you know, to, uh, you know, do further investigation into this and, and develop it as a, a bigger show. It takes a long time to put a, a, an art idea and an art show together. Mm -hmm. It's a big effort. Yeah. It's a lot of moving parts. It, it takes a team. It's a huge collaboration. 
But it's really going to be a, a fun project when we do finally uh, see it on the wall in Sand City, which I have no doubt will happen. Uh, it'll be 100 feet long, and it will be a bit of an homage to uh, James Rosenquist. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's something that's dear to me. I think that'll be a really nice thing. And, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah. And you, it'll be luscious and luxurious, and it'll be, it'll be something people want to go back and look at again. That's, yeah. that's what I like to create, things that are, like, iconic, that people want to go see it a second time. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's interesting because you and I l look at, um, you know, the idea of what street art is is not – we're coming from a different place, mm -hmm. but what goes on the street can be a, a, a lot of different things. So we're trying to, you know, figure out where, you know, we fit into this vocabulary and we, what we have to offer, and especially what you have to offer in terms of hand painting. Mm -hmm. Because again, what you, you know, I can, I can come up with ideas and images, but you have the palette. And that, yeah. that, you know, it's like forming a band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yell lyricist, yeah. but you got to have a guy who plays the guitar. Right. And so that's very, very uh, exciting for, um, for me. And then I personally, I love what, you know, we, we both grew up on the same oh, yeah. advertising. Beautiful stuff. And it's still... You know, it, it still fills us with longing and desire. Mm -hmm. I'm not one that goes after nostalgia, but I like the promise and the, uh, I, I like the promise of what the advertising that we grew up on. Uh, the message, it, yeah. It, it, you know, it was, it, 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 was, it was a hopeful promise for something that we wish for. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea, of, in my own work, I do a lot of tableaus, and I like the idea of glamour. I, I, you know, I love glamour. Mm -hmm. uh, that's accessible glamour for every. You know, mm -hmm. you know, glamour is accessible to everybody, and I like to put that into my work. And I like to use the idea of. You know, I make up my own products, uh, so I like the idea of advertising without the product. Right. That, that's been my uh, my thing. It's a, a little bit difficult to explain sometimes, but mm -hmm. that's what. Uh, I, I think we uh, we both under, have that uh, you know appreciation for it, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what we hope to bring here. Now you again, uh, you're, you're turning, you know, as uh, you're spending more time down in um, in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and you're again training your you know your son is now apprenticing and now taking over Altitude Art and, mm -hmm. in a way. And which not, you're still you're still there <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the wall with him next you're week. You're <laughs> on the wall next week. But um, <laughs> you're uh, transcending back to again painting on canvas, mm -hmm. and then opening up a, a gallery down in New Mexico mm -hmm. of you know your own work. Yeah. So so let's let's talk about that and. You know, it, it, it's this, we're both in the state that, you know, life is short and art is long. And mm -hmm. we're both very, still very hungry. That's mm -hmm. why we're together. Yeah, I, I think so. We both have a lot of energy. We we're both still have a lot of things to accomplish in a lifetime. So. Yeah. But T or C, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, it's, it's fertile ground. It's, it's, you know, I've already done five murals in town. I'm uh, going to start the 6th in August. It's... It's this wonderful blank palette, and I get to make this little town uh, look like I want it to look. <laughs> and who gets to do that? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, we also have the opportunity. We're going to start a gallery on Main Street called uh, Krieg Gallery, and I'll paint there and I'll sell my works there, and uh, we'll probably serve coffee. Uh, so what? Uh, you know, and, and I never asked you what do you like to paint? What do you want to paint? And uh, what do I want to paint? Yeah. I love photorealism with a twist. I really do. I like to be able to take objects. I know how to, to make shapes and, you know, build them with paint. So that's, that's, you know. Building with paint. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, you're, 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 you could, and you don't even need the whole piece of whatever you're painting to tell the story, you know, whatever it is. You could just paint part of it. And people know what that is, especially if you do a really nice rendering and a good execution of it. And, and, you know, that's maybe it's a bit of a riff on what uh, James Rosenquist did, but 
as, as much as I try to paint like any other artist, it still looks like Chris Krieg painted it. Right, you've always had a voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm finding, it, it's interesting as time moves because I'm now looking at stuff that you did back then that I may not have noticed then how good it looks now. Well, thank you. you yeah, know. It's maybe some of it survived the test of time. Yeah. Some of it, we've had some really great bonfires out in the backyard yeah. and made it go away. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's how it is. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but it's not about painting a masterpiece. It's about painting and being involved in the process. And, and we're both process guys. Yes, Just we're showing the up the alchemy, the magic yeah. of touching this stuff. We were both, and, that's why I love what you do. It's what can we do in that moment? Yeah. Yeah, we have an idea, but it's also about showing up in that moment yeah. and executing something. I had you yesterday out in my studio uh, and just laying on paint and doing stuff I would never think of in a million years. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun collaborating. Well, thanks, and, yeah. and, you know, artists are mostly so solo and alone. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun to it's really fun to team up and do this kind of thing. I enjoyed that the other day. Yes, yeah, so very nice. To the future, baby. <laughs> to the future. <laughs> so anyway, my friend Chris Krieg, uh, you're watching the Your Town Television Show. I'm with Mark. I'm with Mark Bear. Well, I am with Mark Bear sometimes. But <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Goodbye.